thousands of people from across the country coming to College Park, Maryland to see our semifinal matchup of the Johns Hopkins Blue Jays against the Syracuse Orangemen. Weather will be a factor. The rain starting to come down. The fans continue to pour in. And let's take a look at how the teams got to this championship bracket and the semifinals. You can see the Syracuse advanced from the quarterfinal win over Georgetown. Hopkins beating Notre Dame. Princeton had to beat Maryland and Virginia. A very close win over Duke. Hi, everyone. I'm Leif Elsmo, bringing you the play-by-play -play today. Joined by a four-time All-American, Quint Kessnick. Quint, a little bit rainy today. That'll be a factor we'll talk about later. But these two teams are loaded, as are all four teams coming into this championship weekend. Well, it's interesting. We have the top four seeds. They've all advanced. Their record against the rest of the NCAA field this year, 40 wins and only one loss. So these are the best of the best. Let's take a look at Hopkins first. Hopkins had a tough quarterfinal matchup against the Western representative, Notre Dame. It was a tight game, but Hopkins went on an 8-2 run in the second and third quarters, really fueled by the work of their faceoff man, Eric Whedon. He won 18 of 26 faceoffs, scooped up 15 ground balls, and then Dan Denahan on the offensive end, four goals and four assists. So Hopkins wins that game 15-11. Hopkins, a team that really has changed their look throughout the season, adding people, shuffling their lineup. They really are maybe the most improved team from the opening day roster. They have two freshmen starting in the attack, Quint, but when you start defending Hopkins, you look first and foremost at Dan Denahan. The offensive star from behind the goal is Dan Denahan. 103 career goals, 6'1", 200-pound, a strong right-handed player behind the cage. I'm impressed with his work in the NCAA playoffs. He's got 18 goals in the NCAA playoffs. And if he's successful behind the goal, that'll set up that man right there, A.J. Hogan. 22 goals on the season. He's a glider. He can go both right-handed and left-handed. He's got an extremely quick release, and he loves to shoot. He takes over eight shots per game. All right, now we take a look at the Syracuse Orangemen, a team that's used to being here 18 times. They come to the championship weekend. They love offense, and this is a team that had to beat a stingy, tough Georgetown team in the quarterfinals to get to the semi. I tell you, that was a tight game until the fourth quarter. It was 11-11, to -11, and Syracuse went on a 4-0 run, fueled by that man right there, Ryan Powell. He ended the game with four goals and four assists. Tremendous face-off work by Syracuse also. Chris Searcy so dominant, and you can see Powell at the offensive end. So Syracuse beats Georgetown 17 to 13. And of course, Syracuse, as you watch Ryan Powell do his magic, a team that has more highlights on the offensive end than any other Division I program, has the most dynamic player in the guy we just talked about, Ryan Powell. Well, Ryan Powell, uh, probably consensus All-American and the Player of the Year candidate. He leads the nation in points per game. He scores over six points per game. He's got over 130 goals and assists for his career. Tremendous balance. He's got great leg strength. He loves to back his defender into the goal and his vision. And when he's seeing the field well, a guy like Mike Springer can really thrive. Springer only a sophomore, 43 goals, including 10 hat tricks. Look at the shot, the stealth bomber, 102 miles per hour for Mike Springer. So that they really work with one another very well. Powell Quint. behind the cage and Springer in front. All right, well, this will be the second meeting between Hopkins and Syracuse. Earlier this year, maybe the most dramatic regular season game of Division I lacrosse. It was a great game. March 17th, a Friday night in the Carrier Dome. Syracuse had a big lead. They were up 13 to 8, but Hopkins rattled off four straight fourth quarter goals to make it 13 to 12. And then with time running down, you'll see Hopkins throw the ball towards the goal. Bobby Benson will score what appears to be a goal, but you'll see that the clock had double zeros up, no goal. So Syracuse wins that ball game in regulation 13 to 12. Well, Hopkins will bring confidence from this near win in the Dome and a great comeback. Again, great confidence for them into the semifinal, while Syracuse will bring the bravado of a great program. We'll have our semifinal matchup at Bird in just a moment. Welcome back to the Euro University of Maryland College Park. It's the NCAA lacrosse semifinals, ESPN's production of the best in college lacrosse. Today's semifinal, Hopkins against Syracuse. The one game that these two teams have been looking forward to all year after meeting earlier in the Dome. It was a dramatic game then. This one promises to be equally as good. Thousands here to see it. Let's take a look at the goalies. Always important at this stage of the year. Brian Carcaterra, Quint, he really is a showcase down there. Very, very acrobatic. And he's getting better as the season has progressed. 56%. And there is Rob Mulligan, the voice, the leader of the Syracuse defense. An outstanding 62.3%. The goals against only eight per game. 
All right, getting set for the opening face-off. We'll take a look at the weather, how it affects this game. You will see as the game progresses, the temperature perfect, 63 degrees. That'll help uh, a shallow team, not a deep team like Hopkins. The wind's not much back to the rain consistently coming down, and we might see this field deteriorate quick. Yeah, we've had rain in the Maryland area eight of the last 10 days. This field is unusually soft for this Bird Stadium surface. Take a look at the face-off. Very important. Searcy against Wheaton. Searcy with the first face-off, winning the draw, getting it back to Liam Banks. Searcy, the number one face-off specialist in the country, 72% on the season, going head-to-head -head with Eric Wheaton. This is Ryan Powell. Everybody's selection for the probable player of the year out to Coyone, number 16 on the midfield as they work it around. Devin Darcangelo on the far side. Very high-powered attack. The weather might slow them down a little bit. Testa playing defense on Ryan Powell. Kaufman, number 32, a great offensive weapon to Coyone, who has a little bit of room. They spread it out for him. Comes down, dishes it back to Liam Banks. Banks works the far side. Gets a beautiful check from Sean Nadelin to take it away. Carcaterra comes all the way back to double team. It's going to go to Hopkins. Nadelin's a good story. Started his career as a midfielder. They switched him to long stick midfield, and now he's playing close defense. Well, Carcaterra was pumped up. He inbounded almost before the whistle was blown. He tried to rush it up and beat Syracuse on a quick clear. A little bit too strong with the emotions. He overthrew the player. Syracuse was substituting on the far side. That's John Desco, second season as a head coach. Look at the great record, 25-6. and six. He's been at Syracuse since 1976, first as a player, then as an assistant coach. John Hall's in his second year here at Hopkins, and equally a very tough, competitive record. 20 and 6, 20 wins. He's looking to get to that championship for the first time. Colors, of course, Hopkins in the blue. Syracuse with the white jerseys. They get their second possession. Ball thrown away by Carcaterra. He made an excellent play on the end line. And now they'll start again with Coyote. This is the same play they started last time. Him working on the wing, driving it in, and looking for Liam Banks behind. The matchups have been set. Hopkins covering Ryan Powell with Brandon Testa. Natalin is covering Liam Banks. This is Kaufman. He gets the double team. Can't get rid of the ball. The position lost. Wet field. Put him on the turf. That was the first slip. We saw P.J. DeConza come over and just slip on the double team. But Kaufman couldn't find a shot or a feed. Kaufman, 22 goals and 23 assists. He loves to pass. He had four assists against Hopkins in their regular season game. He goes to the goal for himself. But his first option, I believe, is passing. He keeps his eyes up, has great vision. That time, the ball just rolled off the top of his stick and out of bounds. He was in great position to put some heat on Carcaterra. Now again, Hopkins trying to clear the ball. This is their second clearing attempt. And this time, they're into their offensive territory. Hopkins now with Justin Shaverly gets it down behind the goal. And this is the big man, Dan Denahan, the anchor. Ryan Powell on one end, it'll be Dan Denahan down here. He's got two freshmen playing alongside of him. Fratarolo with the ball right now, he is a story as well. A lot of faces that have been added to the roster to give punch to the first line. And I think Fratarolo has got to be successful today. Hogan's going to get bottled up by Siglia. Denahan behind the cage, and Glatzel's a great matchup. But Fratarolo might have an advantage over Bassett. Well, Bass is up top trying to play some defense on Fratarolo. They get an early double to try to stop him moving to the goal. Fratarolo moves to that first midfield in about the fourth game of the season, really to add some punch and to help A.J. Hogan, number 12, take some heat off him. Denahan loses his footing behind the goal. They can't quite collect the ball. Mulligan out of the goal back there to help. Glatzel picks it up, looks for the outlet. Finds Bassett. Here they go. They're trying to run. Abrams, one more push, and they're going to push it down the throat of Krakatero, the high shot by Springer. Beautiful job by Syracuse to get it upfield. Pat Dessen put it inside to Springer, and they almost scored. That is the tempo that Syracuse is looking for. Ryan Powell slips twice on his cuts. Quint, I mentioned to you in the opening lineups when they announced the players, he came out and he slipped just on the opening announcing of his name. I don't believe he has long enough cleats. He slipped twice on that one move. We've got a whistle here. It's going to be a foul against Syracuse. Mike Springer, I think one of the riding attackmen, is going to get the call. Watch the replay. You can see Testa clearing. Something happened late after the play oh, with either, actually it's a hold on Ryan Powell behind the play. I tell you, Powell spent a lot of time in the penalty box this year. 14 penalties. That makes his 15th for 12 and a half minutes. Take a look at the extra man for Hopkins. 
They were two for three at Notre Dame. They're riding a hot streak. They're about 50% over their last three games. Denahan, though, had problems with his footing behind the cage. So I think the footing will be an issue here, especially early. A lot of just a steady rain flowing down. And this field took a lot of water over the last nine days. It was a concern just because the weather on the East Coast has been so wet, the field is saturated to begin with. It's taking more water now. So again, it will deteriorate as we go. They start in the 1-4-1, Hopkins does. Hogan up top, gets back to Denahan. Denahan looks to drive the side, tries to flip it left-handed, and goes over top of the goal. A creative play. So many times when you're down a man, the defense assumes that the player behind the goal is going to pass it. But that time, Denahan put his head down and tried a creative shot. Penalty up now. Team's all even as we stay in the offensive zone of Hopkins. Denahan, again, the defender slides. He's open now, and he punches it home. The slide missed him. The defender that was on him just fell down. It was Billy St. George who just slipped. And Denahan knew it, came to the cooker, patiently scores the first goal for Hopkins. His 25th of the season. You can see Mulligan surrounding his defense. Watch Billy St. George just run too fast. Right there, he slips on the wet turf. Denahan protects his stick and beats Mulligan. Remember, Rob Mulligan, a left-hander. Watch the placement of the shot to the near side and low. But again, the defense just slips behind the goal. You can't go rushing out of the person today because it is slick. You gotta keep your feet underneath you. We've seen St. George go down. We've saw Denahan slip and saw Casey Powell, or rather Ryan Powell, slip twice on the same move. Weather definitely going to be a factor in today's game. Hopkins with a 1-0 lead. They have a ball in front and there's a shot goal number two. Beautiful job by Hopkins to push it right down the throat. Adam Doniger, the freshman, in the finishing spot. And he gives Hopkins a 2-0 lead at 10-54 in the first quarter. Doniger, a big kid, his 20th goal of the season. Seven multi-goal games right off the faceoff. He did not play in the first Syracuse game. They added him in the North Carolina game. Watch the faceoff pop to the wing. Syracuse player slips. And P.J. DeConza comes up with the ball inside to Doniger. So right off the faceoff, give DeConza some credit on that far wing. He's covering Bassett, who's such a threat with 146 ground balls. Nine seconds between scores. Hopkins doing exactly what they wanted to do, get the early lead. They want a little more patience in their offense than Syracuse would mind having. Syracuse gets the possession off the faceoff, and Leah Banks immediately says, slow it down, patience, patience, let's get a good shot. Syracuse known for the run and gun, but this team is excellent in their half, course, uh, half court set. They have five, what we call the Fab Five, five very talented players on the field at once. Springer takes it behind. The high White Sox back to Liam Banks. Big size differential on those two fine stars. And they push it up top to Stuart Smith. Smith coming down, didn't have a good angle. Goes back to Liam Banks, easy finishing shot, and it hit the pipe. Good save, I think I got a foot on it. I think hit the post. Looked like Clark might have gotten a piece of it. Then it goes to the post. And look at the ragging Syracuse ride. Burns comes in and gets it back. St. George picks up the ball. Tanya Terra really dodged the bullet there. Good acrobatic save. May have pushed it to the pipe. Hardy, a natural left-hander, shot that with his right hand. He thought he had Clark Terra beat, but it hit the post. And then Timmy Burns, you talk about the superior athlete making the check at the midfield. Powell goes behind the back, misses the connection, but Byrne has great offensive skills, cannot keep his footing. Watch out in front, and that rocket by Stuart Smith, high and wide, not backed up by the offense. Good move by Carcantara to get it back to Hopkins. Take a look at the keys to the game. The Fab Five for Syracuse, they must all show up and produce. Syracuse out shooting Hopkins as percentage-wise, 34 to 26, and then the Orange, they've scored 11 times, they've scored a five, Plus, goal runs. That's the, their signature. They go on three and four, five goal spurts. Liam Banks coming in with a little bit of room up front. Ryan Powell, he's got the corner and the first goal for Syracuse. Beautiful transition. That's what they like to do at Syracuse. They get it down to Banks. He drew the attention of the defense, and Ryan Powell finishes. That's Ryan Powell right there. This play started on the defensive end, a turnover for Hopkins, and give Liam Banks a lot of credit. He looked at Springer down low. He was looking down low, that helped Testa, allowing Powell to get free, and the rifle shot from close range beats Carcantara. Here it is again. You can see Banks looking the defender down. He knows Powell's open, and Powell converts. Another faceoff, all important. Syracuse doing a good job of getting the ball in their stick. Springer trying to get it down low to Banks, can't, and Carcantara again being very, very, very acrobatic and involved in the rides. He has come out every time the ball's been close to him, 
giving it back to Whedon, the face-off specialist. Whedon doesn't mind shooting. Comes down and meets a little resistance, so he gives it off to the wing. Dan Stetson blocked him up. Stetson had a sense that he was going to go to the goal. You can see the impact that Sam Bassett has on the wing of the faceoff. 146 ground balls for Syracuse. And then you can also see the impact that Brian Carcaterra has around the goal. 54 ground balls, which is by far the most by a goalie in this tournament. Faceoff so far, 3-1 to one in favor of Syracuse. Cersei doing a great job against Wheaton, who has really been sensational for Hopkins in the faceoff circle. Hopkins again, this is A.J. Hogan. He's got a great left hand. He can shoot so well, left-handed or right-handed, with accuracy and speed, but Mulligan gobbles that one up. That was pretty far out on this kind of field. He bounces it, Mulligan just gobbles it up. Here comes Syracuse. Mulligan controlled his rebound, played his angles very well, and you can see the ball skim off the wet grass. He was aware of that and stayed low. The tendency, these are turf goalies. They're used to high bounces, but today that ball will stay down low. Syracuse calming down their offense, being a little more patient. We've seen that with John Desco the last two years as he took over for Roy Simmons Jr. Syracuse doesn't mind taking a little bit of air out of it, getting a little more control of the six on six. Hopkins out to a 2-0 lead in this game. Syracuse answered with Ryan Powell, and now they have the ball again. It's been a frenetic first eight minutes of this game. You can see the tempos. There's the rocket, 100 mile an hour shot right into the face mask area of Carcaterra. Coyone drew the defense, and they get it into Springer, and he's got the count. I tell you, the stealth bomber, watch this. Coyone penetrates, draws the double. Springer just has Carcaterra beat. Fortunately, it hit him in the head if you're the goalie there. But Springer, you can see the velocity. Springer hit left or right of that target. He scores with the velocity and the distance he was from the goal. Michelangelo gets it off to his teammates. They try to, again, maintain minutes on the clock. Coyone with A.J. Hogan on him. That kept Hogan out playing some defense for a long time. Hopkins, a team not that deep. They want to save Hogan for the offensive runs. Coffin on the near side. St. George on him. Ryan Powell on the crease. The test on as they rotate around. Coyone trying to get a little step. Schwester playing great defense. Here's the double. Inside, good slide by Hogan. Tremendous slide, the second slide by Hogan coming in to really block that play. First slide was number one, Shook. Hogan came in on the second slide to get the ball down for Hawkins. Hogan's been out there for about four minutes. What I was saying about the pace of this game, very up-tempo early. I think these, the adrenaline will wear out here, and I think we'll settle into a more half-court type of ball game. If you look at the weather conditions, and really, uh, these guys in great condition as they are, will be able to go a long way today. This is not a hot day, as you can tell. The overcast conditions, if it doesn't rain too hard, they will be able to go a long way with their conditioning. Hopkins now trying to be patient, Justin Shaver, the number 21. Gets the double team, dishes it off. This could be trouble, but they could pick it up. Doniger just mishandled it. He would have had trouble on top of Mulligan, but he couldn't pick it up. Abrams now looking for the fast break. Abrams is a threat to go to the goal for himself. In high school, he was an attackman, then moved to the defensive position. He is no stranger to attacking the goal. A great dodger, tremendous stick skills with that long six-foot pole. He can put the ball in the net, too. Doesn't mind shooting in the tradition of the great defense from Syracuse. And now Syracuse with another possession. Five minutes left as you see the first quarter time. Looking for matchups behind the short stick. Far side, Ryan Powell sneaks in. He got tested to turn his back and just squirted down to the pipe, and they found him. Once Ryan Powell got the ball, it took one fake before he buried it. He gets the second goal for Syracuse. His second goal of the game. Now the defense, watch the ISO of Ryan Powell here. You see the Testa will slide. No one picks up Ryan Powell. He just left him alone in front. The dip and dunk, beautiful control close to the goal. Watch it again, Kaufman with the assist to Ryan Powell in front. Hopkins was double teaming Kaufman behind the cage. The help in front was not sufficient. You can't leave that man open in front of the goal. Ryan Powell, his second of the game. That was very bizarre because Testa was sliding away from where the ball was. It had a very bizarre look to it. They sent Shook behind the cage to pressure Kaufman. They didn't like the matchups. Remember, they had their offensive midfielders on the field. Cersei with the possession gets hammered. A little foul shot took something off it. He beats Carcaterra for the third straight goal for Syracuse. They have a one-goal lead. And Cersei
Casey has been on fire at the face-off backs. In two games against Georgetown, he won 45 of 50 face-offs. Watch him convert. He's known to bring the ball backwards, and I think he mixed things up. He went forward with it. Syracuse dominating the face-offs, 4-1 over Hopkins. Well, and because of that, Hopkins trying to shake it up. They put Joe Driscoll out there to take this draw against Searcy. Number 11, Driscoll trying to shake up the success of Searcy, and he gets another one. Flips it back. He couldn't pick it up cleanly, and he may lose it with that flip. Big time hit by Doniger. Ball still on the wing. Hopkins will pick it up. That was a sick hit by Doniger, 225 pounds. And Coach Hawes on the far side is going to call a timeout. But Cersei scores only his second goal of the season. Nine seconds after Powell had scored. And 2-0 Hopkins Lee erased by Ryan Powell with two straight goals. And as you mentioned, Cersei giving Syracuse their first lead. At this is a freshman, folks. Times are good at Hopkins with some good young talent. Doniger, a talented high school linebacker, just absolutely jacked Sam Bassett. Let me tell you, Sam Bassett is a great athlete in his own right. Six foot three, 210 pounds, but that man Doniger was recruited to play linebacker at a lot of big time football schools. John Halls, when they got the ball back, wanted to slow things down, get a little more control, called the timeout. Things getting away from him a little bit. Take a look at the Hopkins keys. The Blue Jays coming in on an eight-game win streak. They need, I think, to dominate the specialty situations. That's the extra man. 37% for the season. Syracuse around 30. The face-to-face -face so far, I've got to tell you, Chris Searcy has been dominating. Four out of five wins, and they've uh, translated into some goals. And then Hopkins has had problems guarding other teams when they get on a run, when they score in spurts. 3-0 run by Syracuse, started by Ryan Powell, their leader. He does it in so many different ways. Six points per game on average, facing the best defense of every team they face. Now, a timeout by Halls. Let's see what they come up with. They've got Connor Denahan in there. We want to remind you, we've got the mics in the goal in this game, so you might hear Mulligan will lock out for you a little bit and let you hear some of the goalies. You may hear uh, Mulligan at one end. You might hear Carcaterra on the other as they are the field generals on that end of the field. John Glatzel right there, Syracuse's top defender. He covers the opponent's best player. Today he's assigned Denahan. He's got a foul against Syracuse, their second foul of the game. A hold, that'll be a 30-second violation. Mulligan in the goal. Well, let's hear what he says about how he directs things from that end. The newspaper started something when I was a freshman. They called me the mouth. Uh, but Coach Simmons likes to refer to me as the voice, just because uh, you know the voice, the emotional leader, as well as the you know the field general, because I, I do a lot of directing out there, you know, directing people in places and you know calling out check calls and stuff like that. So I'm sure you're definitely going to hear me on the field this week. Mulligan, number 13, getting a little help in there from Glatzel, who made a great save earlier this season in a regular season game. That was critical to their success. Denahan up top. This is Hogan with a big cannon shot to tie the game at three. They skipped two men to get it to the open A.J. Hogan. He took two steps and just put all he had in it to beat Mulligan. Syracuse was sitting back in their five-man zone, and Hopkins threw a barrage at Mulligan. That was the third shot of this possession. Watch Denahan, sees the field. Hogan finds the seam in the defense. And look at the location. That ball, very close to the post. Perfect shot against a left-handed goalie. You want to shoot as far away from a stick as you can. Hogan on the board with the first extra man goal of this game. Searcy back to the faceoff circle against Whedon, number three for Hopkins. He squirts the ball out, but it's Hopkins' great weight play of Shook to get it up to their own. Back to Whedon, actually, and here comes Fraterolo, but a stick check by St. George takes it wide. Mulligan slip coming out of the goal. We anticipated a high-scoring game. This game projects to be in the teens. The second game of our doubleheader later this afternoon, Virginia, Virginia and Princeton will probably be a more low-scoring game. But this game, I think these teams can combine for 30 goals. A.J. Hogan now, the guy who scored the last goal for Hopkins, the tremendous All-American midfielder, back behind. Then hand pushes it up top. This is Fraterolo, the big shooter. Dishes off, slide comes a little late, and a good save by Mulligan. Denahan had the shot he wanted on the slide. 
Not great location on the shot. Mulligan comes up with a save. Mulligan, I believe, after watching him play a number of times this year, is really good against shots from close range. He moves his body well. He plays his angles. Syracuse losing the ball sloppily in front. The freshman could have really hurt him again, but Adam Doniger goes left of the shot. You can see Mulligan diving for that ball. When the ball goes out of bounds on a shot, the player who is closest to the ball when it goes out is awarded possession. So that's why you saw Rob Mulligan diving towards the end line. Thank you. Doniger will bring it in. St. George against him. They give it off to the wing. This is Justin Shaverly swinging out wide. He likes his matchup here. That roll again runs right by the defense. He'll take a shot, and it goes with a nice bounce to the corner. Hopkins with two straight, regains the lead. Fraterola unassisted. You talk about confidence in sports, and Fraterola, Fraterola is a guy who came into the season with maybe four or five goals for his career, and then exploded in the second half of the year. Had three goals against Maryland, and then three against Ohio State. Watch this bounce shot, though. This ball just hits off the wet turf and skims off the corner. You can hear it hit our mic. And you see the reaction by Mulligan right there. Just a beautiful shot. I don't think any goal in the country would have made that stop. And that play was in trouble for Syracuse when Dan Stesson went out a little bit high and got beat high. He was playing very recklessly in this wet conditions. Whedon now gets sharper in the faceoff X, comes up with a possession for Hopkins. They lead by one. I think it's clear that the team that has the ball on offense today is going to be able to score because of the field conditions. You have a big advantage when you have the ball and you know where you're going as opposed to trying to defend on a wet surface. Connor Denahan with the bounce shot that Mulligan Sights up and saves. This is Gladzel yeah. and Denahan, the marquee matchup in this game. The best against the best. Stick check. Time for a shot. Big fake. Can't get past Burns. Nice defense there as Abrams fell down initially. Terrific help by Timmy Burns. Abrams fell to the turf, and Burns stepped up to cut off that seam. And Timmy Muir, being a freshman, I think, hesitated to let that, let that shot go. Doniger working tough. Plus, big stick checks in his face. That's Mulligan. You're hearing him direct the defense. Go, Timmy, go. He's trying to get Burns to slide. Burns now firing out for the fast break. Burns picks it up 21. The field is spread. Abrams to his right. Springer down below. Liam Banks. And a goal. This is what every coach fears when Syracuse gets a transition play and they've got the numbers. They are difficult to defend. Banks from Burns. It started with a poor shot by Connor Denahan that was blocked by the defense. Burns in transition. They had a five on four break. Burns does a good job surveying the field, makes a smart pass down low to Liam Banks who converts. Now here's the poor shot. That is just a bad shot, I believe, by Hopkins. Weak angle. You're not going to score on that. Look at Syracuse. Look how they run and they own the middle of the field. Springer dropped down low, opened it up for Banks, and he buries it to tie the game at four. Under a minute in the first quarter. Syracuse getting the fast break off the faceoff, and Searcy, who has been dominant at times, has his second goal off the faceoff. That can really deflate a team. They get a one-goal lead. Well, I think the strategy has been to let Searcy take the shot, and let's see if Brian Carcaterra for Hopkins can make the save. Remember, Searcy coming in only took four shots on the season. He pops it in front. Watch the Hopkins defense, how hesitant they are to cover him. And he pings the corner. Beautiful job by Searcy. His second goal of the game, only his third of the season. But they're going to have to change their strategy. They're going to have to respect him as a shooter. They've got to get in there and stop those fast breaks. Searcy, six out of nine on the faceoff. He had that one, but Burns just couldn't pick it up cleanly, and Hopkins now has it. This could be trouble. Ball down, and he gets double teamed. Still in the offensive end for Hopkins. They can't get it cleanly as Syracuse is all over them, and they just rifle it up down to their offensive end. Things were unsettled. Hold against Hopkins. They'll give it to Syracuse. They'll have possession with that half a minute left in quarter number one. John Hawks can't believe it. Give Syracuse a chance to work on that one goal lead. Coyote, the number one. Offensive threat on that midfield, number 16, gets it to the wing. He's 
running with Devin Darkangelo. Another good shooter, number 31, right there with the ball. Like Kione, senior, from Yorktown. They'll watch the clock. They'll want one shot. He's got 11 left. Rolls in, gets a double. Shook all over him. Time winding down. They might not have enough. Liam Banks has to get into the crease quickly. Pushes it up. Time for a shot. And the clock expires, ending the first quarter. Great offense. Three major swings of momentum as Hopkins opened up with a 2-0 lead. Three straight for Q's. Then two for each team. Gives us a 5-4 first quarter score. We'll be back to Burt Stadium in just a moment. Cross championships from Bird Stadium. This is Hopkins against Syracuse, the first of two here from Bird today. Lee Felsmo along with Quinn Kessenick. A great first quarter action-wise, Quinn. Everybody got their money's worth. Five to four, they ended up, but they were back and forth. The, M the MVP right now is Chris Searcy for Syracuse. He's got two goals. He's got face-off domination, including that last one where he pulled back the basket. Take a look at the first quarter stats. All even, look at the saves though. Carpentero with only one save and the ground ball. Syracuse showing their athleticism, their speed and size. They definitely have the advantage over Hopkins. Sloppy field will make sure you're gonna have some broken down plays. You're going to have mistakes and I think Syracuse doesn't mind chaos on the field. John Hall's with next time, just, just next time we're gonna go get not right. having much chaos. You're hearing Brian Carpentero. We're going here. Tight now, it's not your chance. Both of these goalies, vocal, We're going very here. active. Brandon, Brandon, show Brandon. I got home, show Terror called Brandon for the slide. The slide came with perfect location on the shot by Coyone. Puts it right inside the pipe, hit high, tough to stop, and they get a 6-4 lead. Coyone's 21st goal of the season. You think back two years ago, Matt Coyone was only a sophomore, struggling on the offensive end. You talk about a guy who's worked at his game and improved and become a stellar player. It's Matt Coyone, one of the most improved players in the country. Watch the location. Pings the lower corner. Beautiful jump shot right here. That's not bad defense. You hope your goalie can make that save, but credit Matt Coyone. 21st goal this season. Syracuse has got a two-goal lead. And two three-goal runs for Syracuse. In those runs, they've got three unassisted goals. And here they go in the faceoff against Searcy, just wearing out Hopkins. Good play by Tester to pick it out of the stick of Ryan Powell. Up to Fraterola. Don't cause problems here. Fast break. Benson to the left. Benson will crank it. Good defensive check by Abrams. Ball on the turf. Finally, coming out of the pack, Syracuse will bring it up. Great push. They're playing Kelly and Smith a lot on that short stick defense. They're trying to run a lot of legs in there, Syracuse. Is. Kelly did a nice job there. Marshall Abrams made the play. We're seeing a lot of sticks, defensive sticks, getting them and blocking passes as Natalyn just does it on that end. But Abrams blocked the initial shot by Benson. Now A.J. Hogan with a little bit of room. Tim Burns has to lock up on him. He takes a shot from outside. You heard it jar the mic. That was from a pretty good distance. And he just lights up the same spot that Coyone hit to tie it. You gotta be this kidding me on some of these shots. These are sensational shots. Watch this angle. You'll be right behind A.J. Hogan. I talked about his quick release. Well, here it is. Stop, pop, and fire the ball to the offside, right at the hip. Watch it again. This angle. You can see the location, very difficult for Mulligan to get his stick across the cage and make that save. A.J. Hogan, his second goal of the game. And i got to tell you, both goalies right now, they're at them. These are incredible shots that these players are throwing at them. Right, they're seeing great marksmanship. Again, the location, as you mentioned, perfect for Hogan on that one against the lefty. Not many body parts can get to the hip side off the stick side. Six to five, the score. Face-offs, eight to four in favor of Syracuse. And we know... Pushes this one down, keeps it for himself, and just gets a little bit lazy with it. Ball comes back to Syracuse. Boy, he was just standing there waiting for something to develop. Cersei just checked it out of the stick. Very bizarre. Good hustle by Cersei. Get ready, get ready, okay? Parker Terra talking in the goal. Syracuse bringing in their second midfield line. Timmy Burns, number 21, the tall right-hander, the primary threat. Burns sports some goals on the year. Who's hot? Stuart Smith looking up top. A little bit of room. They open it up for him.
bit, working up top, a little bit of room, they open it up for him. Line Powell spending a lot of time on the crease with Testa. Back left. Testa really face guarding Powell, making it difficult for him to get the ball. I'm surprised that Ryan is content to play in front of the goal. That's where he is right now. He's finished twice. He had the first two goals of the game. He gets here, he's rolling. Burns, rolling inside. Now the slides come. Something's got to be open, but nobody picks it up. Schwester with a great slide to level Tim Burns. Now they're driving down with Muir, the young freshman. Two kids were really bumped up to that second midfield late in the season. The Loyola game, the last regular season game, they made a big impact by adding speed to the line with Connor Denahan. Hopkins bumping A.J. Hogan to the attack on this possession. The second midfield in the game, Connor Denahan. Back left! The leading scorer of this unit, but you can see Hogan now operating behind the goal in an attack role. Back right! The great All-Americans, you want to keep on the field as long as possible. You're working from midfield to attack if you're the coach. And that's exactly what John Halls is doing. This is Connor Denahan, the leader on this young second midfield. Brian Powell caught playing D right here. Has played midfield on occasion at Syracuse. Two passes look behind. They've got an open guy here. Hogan wheeling in front. And he puts it right between the wickets. It looked like Mulligan can't believe it. Great shot again, a lot of speed. Mulligan was set, but great location and velocity. Puts Hogan back on the scoreboard, tying the game at six. Head trick for Hogan already. I tell you, you talk about diversity and shooting. Listen, listen to this. Back up. Go, go, go. Yeah! You can see Mulligan upset with himself. Watch the ISO of Hogan right here. Notice how he does the overhand shot that ends up down between the legs of Mulligan. His last shot went a little higher. This one goes lower. I've seen this kid play an awful lot of games, and I still don't know what his tendencies are that makes him a successful shooter. He really varies it, and, and he changes the way he releases the ball out of his stick. He shows no weakness with the right or a left hand. He's got great velocity extension, uh, tremendous shooting from both right and left hands. It's been a game of swings. Two goal runs for Johns Hopkins. This is their third two goal run and three goal runs for Syracuse. Syracuse comes up with possession. Springer. Lutz. Back to Liam Banks. Get ready! Finally, Hold Powell on. comes off the crease. He gets possession. A nice pick. Gets him a little bit of room up front. He bullies in front. Gives it off to Springer. And a good stick check. Beautiful last minute check by Shook. Took away a goal. Shook got there at the last second. That's Mike Springer. The right-handed shooter for Syracuse taking the feed from Powell. Kaufman on Brasco, he's got room and he's got rope. Beautiful corner shot. He just rolled inside of Brasco and again, the far pipe. They're finding it beautifully. That's a one goal lead now for Syracuse. First, first goalie to make a save wins. Watch Kaufman on the far side. You'll see a seam develop right here. There's no defense. You see right there, Hopkins slow to slide. They didn't fill that area very well, and credit Kaufman for finding the opening. Got that one above Carcaterra a little bit on the far side. Watch the location of this shot right here, right-handed, just to the far post. Carcaterra and Mulligan, you gotta say they're both struggling right now. They are, they're getting a lot of shots. The unsettled, I think, defense, because of the wet surface, probably gives them a little less stability, and they need a few saves to feel comfortable. Mulligan coming out of the goal. This team leads by one. He's got Abrams in front of him. Better get rid of it. He throws it away. No. Finally, the far side almost gave it up. Risky throw by Mulligan. Nobody was in the net. And finally, down to Liam Banks. That was an exciting clear. PJ, we got a help here. Madeline. You hear Carcaterra calling the slides. Liam Banks dropped his stick and went high. Backed up by Springer, Syracuse will have it. This is a chance for Ryan Powell to get the ball. It's an out of bounds possession. Ryan Powell comes off the crease and back to get the possession against Testa. That's, stand the club, get up. Drive, get up. Testa gonna be called for either a hold or a push, but you can see Powell struggling with his footwork and his game is based on his leg strength and being able to back a defender in. And when it's slippery out, I think this really handicaps his efforts. Watch it right here. Testa does a good job to here, but Powell with a quick roll. Watch him roll to the inside right there, and then Testa will push him in the numbers, clearly pushes him into the crease. Nice call by the official. Testa will spend 30 seconds 
in the penalty box. First, first extra man for Syracuse. Pat will have the ball behind as they put their six shooters out there on the season. We're in it. We're in it. Not as good as Hopkins versus Georgetown, one for four. So, and they talked about it yesterday when we talked to the players, but they've been struggling a little bit here in their extra man. They feel like they should be better than they are. Hopkins right now shutting off Ryan Powell behind the goal with number 17, Rick Schwester. You can see the shut off right there. They're content to play a five on four in front of the goal. With the out of bounds, Powell brings it back in. Now Schwester relocks left hand side of your screen. And Ryan told us, I believe, that he doesn't think they're getting enough passes. Great check by Springer to put it out of bounds on Rasko. But I don't think we've seen this. They're not moving the ball very much on their extra man, which doesn't cause, which means the defense is not having to slide very much. Coach Desco is going to call timeout right now. So a little tactical game going on. Hopkins shuts off Powell. Coach Desco wants to call timeout to figure out how to attack on this extra man. We'll be back with second quarter action. Right now, Syracuse leading Hopkins by one. We're going to stay here right now and talk more about the Springer matchup. Watch, watch Springer. He'll check the ball out of Brasco's stick. You see the ball go down. Hopkins will control. And then he'll go over the top right there with his long arms. He makes that check, and the ball rolls out of bounds. That was huge because it gives him another opportunity on extra man. We've talked about them struggling. We've seen why. Ryan Powell says he thinks they're not moving the ball enough, causing the defense to break down with some bad slides. And I think that's exactly what they failed to do on this first extra man of this game. We want to remind you that Pro Beach Hockey is coming up Monday, June 5th, 3 p.m. from Huntington Beach, California. This is exciting Pro Beach League Hockey. It's third season featuring six teams. You've got to watch this Pro Beach Hockey. Today's extreme sports fan really loves it because it combines three emerging segments of the industry line. The fitness hockey player, the aggressive skater. It's all right here on Pro Beach Hockey June 5. ESPN.com, a part of the GOAT Network, go.com. And we're back to Bird Stadium with an extra man. Now we're saying all even. The referees on the far side. You can count six players for Hopkins. Coach Desco not happy. He called that timeout specifically to design an extra man play. And then to find out that you're all even after the timeout has got to be very disheartening. He still has possession and one goal lead. The rain coming down heavier. You see Desco getting saturated on the sideline. Second season as head coach, he's been with the team for so long. Great winning program along with Roy Simmons. Shoot, I got it! Parker Terra barking out signals. Right, Springer behind. Ryan Powell still on the crease, being really guarded tightly by Testa. Here's a shot by Banks. And Quint, you talk about them being unsettled. The goalies still really haven't made any quality saves. Parker Terra lets this one get by him, and now there's an 8-6 to six game. Banks, the second goal of the game. The low location has been successful hit for him. Watch it again, Springer behind the goal. Remember, Hopkins is shutting off Ryan Powell right now. And Banks just steps in. This, that's just poor defense. I think they're trying to zone it up in front of Carcaterra, but watch this right here. Watch how open Banks is. And look at the defense. There's no one in that seam, and Banks just finishes. You can see there's too much standing around. Here's the shutoff. You can see Tim Muir for Hopkins in the face of Ryan Powell. Powell started the game with two goals. Two goals straight by Syracuse. I talked about the run to graph this game perfectly. Hopkins just scored in bunches of two, Syracuse in bunches of three, which means they'd be up for another goal. You know, sometimes I think as a goalie, Carcaterra may try to think too much. If you can remember back the prior possession, Banks shot the ball high over the goal. And I think that last time when Banks lowered his stick, Carcaterra expected that high shot and caught him off guard. Great shot from the wing by A.J. Hogan. He came in and wrapped it around his shoulder, causing a lot of problems by Mulligan. He hit the pipe and came back out. Leah Banks looking for possession. Syracuse just fighting to get some time to calm it down. Banks out front. Abrams came all the way down to help out with a long stick. Looks like some kind of violation for Syracuse. Maybe too many men on the field or a 10-second violation. They've got to get the ball in the offensive box in 10 seconds. I'm not sure what it was. They got it down past the straight line, but they never got it in the box, and that was the problem. Back to Hopkins, down by two. Rain continuing to come steadily. 
field will be breaking down. We talked about the East Coast really being wet over the last nine days. They've done a wonderful job on the field, but Billy, it is that wet hard, underneath that luscious green grass. They brought in a helicopter on Thursday to dry this field, and yesterday the field had fans. So the field's in good condition. We'll see how it softens up as this game progresses. Do your one Hawking. for now. Billy, get in your one, Bill. Mulligan telling Billy St. George he's number one on the slides. Raderola gets it behind to Dan Denahan. Hopkins being patient. Remember, over the past five minutes, they've played defense the entire time. Foul call, continuation play. He's got to make a save. Ball goes wide. That will be a foul on Stuart Smith, the short stick defender. You can hear the reaction from Rob Mulligan. That'll be another pushing violation. Fraterola drawing that foul. Nice close-up of Dan Denahan. We'll see what the Syracuse defense has in store for this Hopkins extra man. They have been known, Syracuse, to shut off a player of their own. Watch the replay. This is Denahan attacking Billy St. George. And St. George does a nice job there getting his stick on Dan Denahan's gloves right there. This will be the third extra man. They are one out of two. 50% today. Four shots. Right now, Denahan is being shut off in the middle of the field. Keep your eyes on number 12, A.J. Hogan, at the top of the box. Ball comes inside to Hogan. The stick checks put the ball back on the turf. Well, they got Denahan in the rotation, even though he was shut off, which is a good thing to do. Hogan got the ball, but a great slide put it back to Syracuse. That last play going to be offsides against Syracuse, so Hopkins will have possession. The last two times down, as you look at John Hawes, his, the Syracuse team has lost the ball on mental mistakes. They didn't get it into the offensive box, lost it. They were offsides on this last one, lost it. And they keep giving the ball back to Hopkins. Teams back to even strength. Rabuano. Rob Rabuano comes in here and gives it back to Downer. Far side is Denahan. He's got Glatzel on him. Syracuse is doing a nice job of the, the interior of their defense. Benson, number 13, the tall left-handed freshman for Hopkins, is such a scoring threat, but they're really not letting him get involved in the game. If you think back to last week against Georgetown, Scott Urich, Georgetown's crease attackman had five goals. So Syracuse's defense doing a better job inside. Hogan tries to beat two players. Great slide by Burns. Gets the ball back on the turf, but nobody can get it cleanly. Finally, Hopkins, Dan Denahan comes up, looks for an outlet. He'll resettle the attack. He's got a little bit of room, so he's going to push. Back left. Back to X, Doniger looks for a slide increase, and finally gets to Benson. He talked about it, but a good foot save. Mulligan comes up with a nice leg save, and Benson was exactly where he wanted to be. Benson slides so well inside, he shifts from post to post. They finally get it inside to him. Watch this. Watch this replay right here. Watch the early slide. The Syracuse defense right there comes and makes the body contact. That's a double team on A.J. Hogan. The open players are generally behind the goal. Look at the swarming defense. At that stage, you got Syracuse defenders all over the middle of the field, swarming to A.J. Hogan. We've seen what he can do with the ball. Burns with a nice early slide on that one, but now we're back to the offensive end. Stuart Smith getting a lot of playing time, number 35, gets it back behind to Liam Banks. Banks to Powell, who's out there with Testa. And he'll start the ball on the wing. Carcaterra talking about them setting up a dodge. Spencer right. Back left. Leah Banks gets it up top to Timmy Burns. Smith, the other member of this line. Brasco, who was beaten by Burns earlier. Gets to get inside. This double team takes the check and the ball out of a stick. Here they come again, Syracuse picks up the loose ball. They've done a great job. Spencer Wright with this one, but Quint, they've been all over the ground ball. Syracuse has it's paid dividends for them for two-goal lead. Second chance opportunities. We're going to have a timeout. Coach Desco on the far side, but Hopkins making some stops defensively with the clearing game, going from offense to defense. A little sloppy right now.
We'll be back to Bird Stadium in just a moment with the second quarter action from semifinal number one. College Park, it's a great celebration of the game. Look at the rain coming down, continuing to get harder, steady. Syracuse, their championship years, tremendous program. 18 straight years they've been to the championship series. Right there, John Desco, longtime assistant coach, second year as a head coach. Kevin Donahue to his left, the assistant coach now, was a great player at Syracuse. And the team with a two-goal lead as we go to the final four minutes of the second quarter. A sense of urgency for this Syracuse senior class. They have not won the national championship. They've been here every year. And Banks gets the ball checked out by Shook. Good defensive move there. And Ryan Powell with a little bit of a lazy move to get the ground ball. Gets pushed out by Testa. Testa all over him. In these sloppy conditions, you can't take any play for granted. Brasco wide open in the middle of the field as Syracuse changed personnel. They got their defensive line out there on the other side, and then they lose the ball. Couldn't handle it cleanly as they went to Connor Denahan. Connor Denahan trying to play defense, pushing in front. The shot and a good save by Carcaterra. He blocked that one beautifully. Tried to get it back to Brasco, pushed from behind, and that will be a call. What an interesting play. Kevin Kelly comes down. Carcaterra makes his first save in maybe eight or nine minutes, and Kelly continues to run into the goal. So it's what's called a play-on situation, and Hopkins has a chance to clear it. Well, they throw the pass to Brasco, and he gets absolutely crushed from behind. Watch this replay. You'll see Kelly dodging against Denahan, and watch Kelly end up in the goal right there. And then Carcaterra outlets to Brasco, and he's dumped from behind. Here, this shot is again. A good save by Carcaterra. That's what's called a play on right there. Hopkins gets a chance to make a pass. If it's unsuccessful, they would, would have maintained possession. So Hopkins with another extra man. One goal they've scored today. This will be their fourth attempt. Big shot from the right-handed shooter side by Connor Denahan. Mulligan chases it momentarily, but backed up easily by Hopkins. Hogan has had Dave the hot Hogan's got three goals right now. Syracuse Back shutting him off on this extra man. They're taking him completely out of the play. They get inside to Benson, stick check, and the ball still almost found the net. Back right. Doniger backs it up. Back right. Benson substituting oh, on the fly. Over. He'll be replaced by right. Frateroa, who's got a better outside shot. Well, he shattered his stick and broke in half on that check. He had to get new equipment. Then down the hand, A.J. Hogan, and he sends a rocket to the corner, goes out of bounds. Mulligan got a piece of that. You can see the water right. squirt off of his stick that hit off the plastic. Another shot. This one hits around the feet and just dribbles in. Good hard Whoa. shot. Right hand side, Connor Denahan. Hopkins second extra man goal of the game. Intense pressure. Syracuse just content to pack it in in front of their goalie Mulligan. And Hopkins content to take those 12 yard shots. And Mulligan got a good piece of this. You see Denahan, number 24. He's been hobbled all season with some tendonitis, actually some arthritis in his knee. He's picked his game up though as the weather has warmed up. Spends about two hours every day in the trainer's room, and that one trickles by Mulligan. The second extra man goal for Johns Hopkins. Seriously, back out to the faceoff circle, number 46 for uh, for Syracuse, that would be. And Wheaton, number three for Hopkins, two of the best at Division I lacrosse at facing off. Syracuse had a good day. A.J. Hogan, who came out and played attack on this particular series, couldn't get it cleanly. They get it back to Mulligan. Mulligan quickly to the far side where nobody's on, Billy St. George. Now they'll shift some players around. You get Coyone out there. He does a nice juke move to get open. Slide comes in, but not enough numbers for Syracuse as they were getting some fresh legs on. I don't think you want to challenge a player like Matt Coyone up by the midfield line. With his speed and his skill, he can run by you quickly. Rich Schwester now with Kaufman as the guy he has to defend. Kaufman with great offensive skills. Came into this program as an attackman. Has been playing midfield to a spot opens up for him, hopefully next year on the attack. Banks underhand out front to Burns. Oh, Brandon! Brandon! Springer on the far side with the ball. Tried to get inside to Kaufman. Did. Springer asking for the ball far away. Get out by the top side. In the crease. Good chatter by Carcaterra. Yes, Carcaterra yeah, congratulating each guy that made a great play there individually by name. Interesting the way Hopkins is shadowing Ryan Powell, taking him out of the ball game, letting guys like Josh Kaufman, Springer, and Banks control from behind the goal. 
Mark Gutierre comes out for this clearing opportunity. Testo on the far side just pushes it up. Ryan Powell, one guy can't play two, and now Hopkins brings it down. Timeout called by John Hobbs. He's got 115, as you can see, in this first half left. He's down by one. He can tie it up right here. He'll draw up a play and come back and try to do that in just a moment. Bird Stadium, the crowd's here. The water is too. Leads eight to seven from Bird Stadium at College Park. Well, they call a timeout. Quinn Kesnick, who are they gonna give the ball to? A.J. Hogan has had the hot hand with the hat trick from the outside on an assist. Doing it himself on that goal. And here on the near side, the jump shot down low. Hogan has nearly half of the Hopkins goals. So he would be a prime target with this timeout to get the ball to try to tie the game before the half. Hopkins with a rotation. Trying to get some heat on Mulligan. Hogan right there, number 12. Syracuse Denton. playing his own defense. So they anticipated the big play, tried to mix up Hopkins with the zone. Young Don Scott, number six up there, the second midfield with Connor Denahan, who scored the last goal. This is A.J. Hogan, who's working out of the attack zone right now. And X! You good, Glatz? Side by St. George comes way across the field. Now they're in trouble. Two guys way out in the wing. Good job by Denahan to get him out farther away from the goal. Now Connor Denahan comes in, but the check from behind saved the play. Great check by Stesson. Terrific recovery by the Syracuse defense. They pressured Dan Denahan, but then recovered well enough to cover his brother on the other side of the field. Get in! Barking out slide packages. Lift, lift, touch! Edwards drops the ball to the turf, and they get it back. Step. Jump shot by Hogan. We talked about how great he is. Don Scott got the ball to him. He took a bounce shot. They call a crease violation out and back into the crease. And it'll stay here with one, one second, second left. Watch Hogan call for the ball, and keep your eye on this bounce shot. It'll hit the upper post. It'll skim off the turf. Actually, watch his reaction. You'll see he puts his hands up. He thinks it's a goal. Watch this ball hit the upper post right there and then kick out. He'll raise his hands. He thinks it's a goal. It was not. They've readjusted the clock to three seconds, Clint. Ball pushed into the crease. Andrews with a big check. It'll be a one-goal lead for Syracuse as they go to the locker room. Entertaining offensive show by Syracuse and Hopkins in our first semifinal from Bird Stadium. We've got a great matchup coming up after this, right here on ESPN2. But everything you talked about, Quint, a lot of offense, a lot of shots. Oh, I tell you, incredible. Ryan Powell opened this game, two goals, and then A.J. Hogan really took over, but Syracuse has been too much off the faceoffs. Chris Cerci, the story, winning most of the faceoffs and actually getting two goals for himself. Hopkins faithful out here, rooting the team on. They kind of consider at least the Syracuse guys feel like Hopkins has a home crowd here. Obviously, Hopkins not that far away, 40 miles down the road. Syracuse coming in as the favorite, 13-1 on the season, the number one seed. The, their only loss against Cornell in midseason, and they've beaten the three teams remaining. They've beaten Hopkins regular season, they beat Princeton, and they beat Virginia during the regular year. So they are the strong favorites, but it didn't seem like they were feeling any pressure. This was a wide open first half. Semifinals today. We'll have the second semifinal 45 minutes after this. Here are the numbers from the first half Syracuse against Hopkins. Look at the differential in shots. Hopkins out shooting Syracuse. The saves, though, Brian Carcaterra, only one save for Johns Hopkins. Uh, and the faceoff advantage going to Syracuse. They scored two quick goals. Chris Searcy did right off of faceoffs. And it was following up another Syracuse score, so he really piled it on as you look at the ball. And the faceoff for half number two. Wheaton number three for Hopkins. Searcy number 46. And again, Syracuse gets possession to open ready. the second half off that faceoff. Syracuse doing a tremendous job. Liam Banks getting a lot of pressure off of the wing. They're really pressuring Banks. Sam Nadelin way out on the wing. Right. Sam Bassett with that ground ball for Syracuse. Number 28 comes in off the wing. Kaufman gets his defender to fall down. Brasco just lost his footing. Kaufman couldn't get a shot. Kaufman has been in that same spot twice today, Quint, and has not pulled the trigger. Good. Get up, Don. It's Ryan Powell right content away. to sit on the crease. Kaufman becomes the best passer in the Syracuse lineup. Back right. 
Pushed it into a sliding player. Springer. Springer just crashing down for the left-handed shot. And with Ryan Powell in tight and not wanting to slide from Powell, it makes Springer a little more open for that shot. Terrific set play by the Orange. They strike first. Springer left-handed off of a pick on the inside. You can see great ball movement on the far side. Here it is again. Coyone down the side to Banks. And Springer will come off some kind of pick action right there in front and converts left-handed pass Carcaterra. Syracuse up by two. 44th goal of the season. He was, he's one of the biggest differences between the Syracuse team this year and last year. Glass on one end, him on the other. Here comes Searcy, off to Powell. Powell far side, and a finishing shot from Syracuse gives them two goals in a row. No, wait. You have the ball. I'll take that. You right blew it, but he blew it. You had the ball. You're going that way. That ball comes out. That is not a goal. Take it off the scoreboard, which they just did. 9-7 to seven is where we'll stay with the score. Terrific passing by Syracuse. Off the face off again. That's a common theme. Ryan Powell, far side to Banks. And the ball hits the back of the net. That ball is outside of the goal. It is not in the goal right there. You can see the officials thought it was in the goal, and you can see the frustration. Banks knew. By Liam Banks. He drifted back a little deep on the far side, took himself out of the angle. Boy, that is the killer instinct uh, that Syracuse has had in this game coming up face-off. They score, get another face-off, and come down and follow it up. They've done it twice today. That would have been the third time. Hopkins looking to clear. They do give it to A.J. Hogan on the far side. Benson, number 13 on the crease, the big target. Six foot four, has Abrams on him. Doniger up top to Fraterola. Gives himself a little bit of room as he works against the defensive checks of Syracuse and Get up, Black Bill, you're Kelly. good. Under control, Bill. Bill, under control, come on. Mulligan asking for the defense to control himself. Under control check. And a big check there takes the ball away from A.J. Hogan. Stesson came in with a nice double. Behind the back, over towards Stesson and Abrams. Gonna be a violation against Hopkins. Glatzel made the over-the-shoulder pass, and he was fouled as he fell to the turf out of bounds. You can see Mulligan talking to the official frustration foul by Johns Hopkins right there. John Hall has their coach frustrated himself. Oh, absolutely. He doesn't want those mental mistakes. He knows he needs to play perfectly as far as mental mistakes. Don't create any opportunities where Syracuse can start that run that you talk about, Quinn. We've had runs in this game, but they've been answered every time. What you're afraid of is that Syracuse marches off that run, and you can't answer it equally. John is the lead, John! Oh for one on the extra John's man. This will be their second chance. You hear Carcaterra in the goal. Carcaterra pushing. That was a great save by Carcaterra. Beautiful job by Kaufman in the middle, and they just couldn't finish it. Kaufman with the one touch, Carcaterra met him stick on stick. The biggest save for Carcaterra so far in this game. Left. Had to go from behind out in front, did a great Glove. job doing Get it. Liam Banks looking as they cut off right, Ryan Powell Get Get up. Get up top of this screen. You can see it off to the right. Powell, not a factor, playing 5 one four. You can hear Carcaterra telling his defense to stretch, push out against Springer because of his shot. He can shoot the ball over 100 miles per hour. Stay out of glove. Stay on the gloves. Backside. Oh, good stick check by Shook. Springer had an open Coyote, and Shook really helped out his goalie there. Again, Liam Banks coming around the same spot, not improving his angle very much, and Carcaterra gets another good save. Great ride by Ryan Powell. He's double team, triple team. Full move inside, looks to give it up. Frasco gets the ball out of Ryan Powell's stick. But again, Syracuse riding hard and getting the ball back. Delayed call. Springer, and another big save by Carcaterra. Powell is down. He was slashed violently. We may have more than one call coming up here against Hopkins, but Carcaterra just made three incredible stops. He is heating up here in the second half. Just when they need him to, because Syracuse is putting on an offensive show. Watch Ryan Powell try to take this game over himself. You'll see him hacked right here. Great check by Brasco, and watch the intensity inside. Shook loses his stick, and he's fouled right there is the foul. So Syracuse with yet another extra man. Carcaterra has been asked to make three stellar saves, robbing Kaufman and Springer. Ryan Powell getting a lot of attention. 
lot of times you want to make sure the referee knows you're getting hit so you stay down the ground a little bit longer. Powell working on that power, Kaufman working on the footwear. Powell, Powell, Fly around, two goals today. He's been shut off at every opportunity. And again, they'll have an extra man opportunity. Go, 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 go. They give it a little bit different go, go, look this time, Q. Go, go, go. Shutting off Powell behind the cage again. Get out. Here comes a five on four. Up top, this would be a big shot for the corner, but they can't get it to stick. Tom Hardy with the right-handed shot, backed up beautifully by the man who was shutting off Powell. Powell falling asleep on that a little bit, and they get the ball back. Schwester with the heads-up play. Let's see if they can clear. Syracuse will try to match up man-on-man -man here. And very quickly, Krakatera gets it up to Hogan. Hogan easily beating defenders in the middle of the field. So slick, right hand and left hand. He loves a little bit of room in the middle of the field. Really quick pressure on the defense. Let's see if Syracuse doubles. Remember, they're still on the extra man. They'll send a double team to try to make the takeaway check. Axel, him! Turn him back! Trying to get an opening with the double team coming at him, and that pressure on Fraterola. Put the ball on the floor. Can they get it back? Finally, Abrams. And here comes Syracuse pushing it down. Tom Hardy. Over to the side to Dan Stesson. Fraterola caught on the defensive end of the field now, but as the penalty expires. Stesson gets it in traffic, and he gets hammered by Schwester. Here, here. Beautiful job defensively by Hopkins. Margaretera and defense of Hopkins really getting tight here after Syracuse opened up the third quarter with a goal. Timeout called by Haas. He doesn't like the lack of control. I think he doesn't like the fact that he's got to call timeout so early in the third quarter. We'll take a short break from the third quarter action to come back with Syracuse leading Hopkins by two. Double team, the ball bounces off of Mulligan who had position, but enough English on it that Hogan gets his fourth goal of the game. A.J. Hogan unassisted, the turnaround jump shot. He's playing attack right now. As you can see, he's being covered by Marshall Abrams. Watch the replay, Hogan doing it by himself. Look at Abrams, that's excellent defense. If you're Syracuse, he just turns and jumps. Mulligan sees it, gets a piece of it, but so frustrating for the Syracuse goalie. Hogan on fire, 26 goals in the season, four today. Focused on the sideline, you can see him just all business today, the first team All-America is. Interesting, last week against Notre Dame, the quarterfinals, 0 for 10, his shooting. He was just missing the goal by inches. Today, you can see, he's putting the ball on goal, making Mulligan make some saves. How about passing on the ground ball, but he forces it over to St. George and loses it. St. George comes up with it now, as Syracuse again wins a faceoff. Syracuse to pass it. Syracuse Textbook. is going to be offsides here. Syracuse was offsides on that last play. Second half, we've had three straight faceoffs, one by Syracuse. Back up, White! Now Hopkins will clear it in there, and they definitely, even though Hopkins had the first, or Syracuse had the first goal, Hopkins has really gotten into a control mode here in the last four minutes. Ryan Powell getting frustrated, and they call him. Carcaterra pushed Powell from behind. The referees made the right call, and then Powell retaliated, but Carcaterra seemed to take a dive on that. And it looks like Ryan Powell will end up in the penalty box here. Watch this play. Picks the pass off the ball. Now watch Carcaterra, he pushes him. So the referees blow the whistle. And if you keep that rolling, you'll see the retaliation. Watch Powell, he'll get up and he'll retaliate. Carcaterra right there, and Carcaterra takes a dive. So Carcaterra making things happen, knowing that this has the potential to be the last half of lacrosse he plays in college. Doesn't want it to end here. We talk about both of these programs with the great history, Quint, and both of these classes not wearing a ring yet. You can see Powell jogging off the field. Five defenders in the game for Syracuse right now. And six offensive players for Hopkins. So Hopkins will have the extra man here. Carcaterra won that one. Smart move for him to come up and initiate against Powell, who's very frustrated not being into the motion of the offense. Hopkins with yet another extra man. 
Dan Denahan controlling behind, slick surface. He's got Doniger on the bottom right here, right-handed shot. He skips him, and it's picked off by Abrams in the middle of the field. Tried to skip a man as Glatzel picks it up and drops the ball. Pushed out of bounds by Denahan. They'll give it to Syracuse. The right call was made. It'll be an orange ball. Great defense. The stick work, Marshall Abrams, Jay. Avendroff coming in off the bench and getting a stick on that. Number 47 for Syracuse. Stesson over to Mulligan. Stesson will get it back and just clear it up easily on the near side. Stesson's got some speed. Behind the goal to Kaufman, who now sets up on Testa behind the goal with, of course, Ryan Powell on the sidelines. So a different look for the attack. Ryan Powell cooling off on the sidelines for that last confrontation with Carpentera. Hoffman, very talented. He gets double teamed from behind. The check comes and puts the ball on the ground. Testa with a lunging check. Great move by him. Far side and a decking play by Powell. They'll call him again on his hit on Sean Nagelin. Powell, two consecutive fouls. We said coming in that his Achilles heel is he plays with a lot of fire and a lot of passion. And for an attackman to have 14 penalties for 12 minutes prior to this game is a lot. And you can see, watch this replay. He'll hit Natalie high up around the head. I'm not sure that that looked like a pretty after me. Looked, uh, I, in, in real time, I thought he hit him kind of high. Watching him in the slow mo, it's actually under the arm. You can see Powell with two consecutive penalties. Chance to put his team into a bad spot by allowing Hopkins to tie the game. Frustration mounting on John Desco and Ryan Powell right there. Sort of taken out of the game by Hopkins and their shutoff tactics. Again, an extra man play for Hopkins. A.J. Hogan, four goals on the day up top. Off to the wing and now down below to Dan Denahan. Benson to the left. And looking to the near side, Connor Denahan. Hopkins with two players behind the goal, four in front. Different look with Deniger. Or Doniger up front. Oh, he tried to handcuff. Tried to get it to A.J. Hogan, but a little bit tight on him. Great play to get the ball up. Sean Nalen again making a sensational play, but throwing it wide. It will come out. Syracuse's man down defense being tested in this third quarter. They're stepping up. Hopkins really hasn't even put a shot on Mulligan in the last two penalty situations. Kevin Kelly with the ball out of bounds. He'll be doubled. Bobby Benson. The freshman and Doniger, both freshmen, 13 and 25, giving Hopkins a great look for the future. Burns. Pushing it in, goes for the right-handed shot and just can't get it around Carcaterra, but this will be backed up and it will stay in the Syracuse offensive sticks. Team's not back to even strength yet. And so Burns, I think, caught the Hopkins defense kind of napping. They, they assumed that he was going to run the ball around the outside and kill the remaining penalty time. He had a chance to score a big one there. Didn't have much of an angle. Reached around Carcaterra. Kaufman got doubled last time. Let's see what he learned from that situation. He tries to split two guys. Comes back with it. But again, Testa puts it back on the turf. Kaufman getting double teamed effectively two times in a row. Penalty now is up, so it's even strength as Kaufman tries to ride Carcaterra. Carcaterra loves the open field. Hopkins now will bring it down. Schwester. Getting it down low. Doniger working on St. George. Dan Denahan. Glatzel playing defense on him. Now teams will wait, shift some people around. They get A.J. Hogan on the field. So Hopkins now. To Muir, the young guy out there. Muir making a move inside. Muir with the right-handed shot that goes wide, backed up beautifully. Watch out, this could be trouble. Inside and wide for Dan Denahan. He really caused problems with a beautiful backup play. And another hit, technical foul on Syracuse, it looks like again. They are losing control, and Desco can't stand it. This is an interesting play because Abrams and Benson are chasing this shot. And Benson holds Abrams' stick blatantly. And Abrams gets frustrated and then dumps Benson right there. So you can see Hopkins, the taking a dive, has really benefited in, the, in this quarter. Interesting, though, they were both chasing the shot, and Benson had Abrams' stick clamped, and, and Abrams got really frustrated, and he said, hey, and he shoved him, and he gets caught. So Syracuse losing some composure, letting their season slip away as Hopkins has another chance to tie the game. They've been extra for the last two minutes. Two for six on the day. 
Connor Denahan scored an extra man goal, and A.J. Hogan scored an extra man goal. One of, the, one of the big problems with this is that Abrams goes to the sideline because he had the penalty. You're taking maybe your best long pole off the field, and now you've got to stop Hopkins' offense. And Denahan gets it to A.J. Hogan. Stessing up there with a short stick number four. Hopkins being very patient. Everybody out in front of the goal now. 3-3 formation. Denahan looks to the wing. Far side. They tried to skip a guy, and Mulligan smelled that one and picked it off. Great play by him. Tries to split and get it up to Stessen. Hopkins is now winning the ground ball wars, where before it was all Syracuse, but look at Syracuse riding again. Ryan Pat, a little bit of room against Testa. He gets hit in the face. They call the penalty. Dishes out in front, and they can't get a finishing shot. Syracuse dodged three straight extra man. They were man short three straight times. Almost made it count on the other end with Ryan. And Powell doing a little showmanship of his own. Watch him move his head as Testa makes a contact right there. And then Powell just somehow gets that call. But the referees all of a sudden clamping down on some of this aggressive play. So Ryan Powell now out with an extra man for Syracuse. They still have a one-goal lead, and Johns Hopkins, are they're going to look back on that last three minutes, Quint, if, and look about how that affected this game. A chance to tie it, maybe even go ahead. Right now, we will be five on five for a bit here. Teams at even strength playing nine on nine, and then Syracuse's penalty on Marshall Abrams will be released, and so they will have an extra man. Well, they switched up uh, from Nadal and they pushed Schwester back there on Powell to shut him off like they have been doing. They have all four long sticks for Hopkins up in front. Now the extra guy is out there at six on five. Powell's still content to be shut off. Syracuse 0 for 3 on their extra man. We talked to them yesterday about how they've struggled this year and that could cost them the game today. Bounce shot, not a good one, way out front by D'Arcangelo. A pretty poor shot, even if it was an extra on an extra man, even worse. Carcaterra on fire. Pushes it up to Brasco. So Syracuse not even getting a great shot with the extra man. Hopkins again with possession. Syracuse leading by two under five minutes in the third quarter. Doniger. Then a hand up to Hogan, who gave it all the speed he could, but Mulligan tracked it beautifully. Pow, way up front. He's whacked, but gets it to Abrams. Abrams has got Springer to his right. Liam Banks to his left, and it's Banks with the right-handed shot to finish. The play started with Robbie Mulligan making the save. Syracuse counters. They counterattack. Marshall Abrams, the ball ends up with Banks. He goes down low again. He beats Carcaterra. You see the big smile, Liam Banks. Watch how Carcaterra almost gets this ball. Abrams to Banks. He'll go down low, five hole right there. And you can see Carcaterra all over that, the frustration as it trickles in. But Marshall Abrams in transition, kicks it to Banks. Syracuse stretches their lead 10 to eight. You gotta give Mulligan credit. He's been really hammered up there. A lot of pressure on him, but he started that outlet pass, immediately got it up in the middle of the field, and then it was Banks on the other end. Abrams, Banks, Springer, three guys, three on two to put pressure on Carcaterra. Banks quietly having a sensational game. Three goals, two assists for Liam Banks. A.J. Hogan now working from behind the goal. Number 12 gets it out front of Doniger. And this is Connor Denahan on the field working against the long stick defense of Seglia, the best long pole. Not a great size player. He's not big, but he is tremendous. And if you ask the Syracuse guys, he's the best in the game in the long pole position. 24 against 24. Connor Denahan and Seglia, they go to the middle of the field. This is St. George with Denahan on him. Loses the footing a little bit again. St. George is willing to mug you over there. He can't wait to hit you. St. George known as a slugger and a hitter. Hard shot to the corner. Beautiful job by the young freshman starting on attack. Adam Doniger out of Hewlett, New York. Played at Lindbrook. Really has helped to add some firepower to this offense. He brings him back to within one. This is when he is so dangerous, when he's working towards the middle of the field.
Denahan draws the crowd, and watch Doniger put his shoulder square up to the goal. So tough to find that ball when it's moving out of a moving target. Give Doniger some credit for working towards the middle of the field, really improving his shooting angle. The big freshman is tough to stop once he puts that shoulder down. Game still up for grabs, and here comes Cersei again, answering with a big face-off. Wheat trying to check him from behind. Springer getting wrapped by Wheat after Wheat. Loses a faceoff. He is ferocious in his defense. Oh. Liam Banks gets the defense. The ball goes to Springer. Springer off the pipe. And it comes back out front. Run down beautifully by Stuart Smith. But that one was right off the Drive iron. Drive lower. I got backside. I got the backside. You hear Kakatera talking about Drive. tested defending Excellent. Ryan Powell. You must get lower than Ryan Powell when he backs you in like that. He loves to get down really low, three or four feet off the ground, and use his tremendous lower body strength. Nailing. Gets help from Shook. The slide comes. He puts it right back up top to Burns. Burns sets and fires, and a big save by Carcaterra. Powell with another riding check to get the ball back in his stick. In close. Springer, and he scores on Carcaterra. And the defensive man who slid in, it was Schwester who tried to fill the void when Carcaterra was out of the goal. Two goal lead for the Orangemen. We've gone back and forth in this exciting third quarter. This play is Ryan Powell. Watch the ground ball work, scoops it up, avoids the check, somehow manages to get out of the traffic with it, and then finds his teammate, the stealth bomber Springer, and Springer capitalizes. You can see the Hopkins defense, Helter Skelter, multiple fakes, Carcaterra nowhere to be found. Springer's got his second goal, but that goal goes to the hustle of a player like Ryan Powell. And it was Carcaterra who made the first check on Powell, so he knew Carcaterra was out of position. Carcaterra doing a wonderful job of hustling about 20 yards out of the crease that left the crease vulnerable. And here we are on the next faceoff. Two goal lead for Syracuse, and they push it down right in front of their own goal. Abrams comes up with the loose ball. Syracuse has dominated the loose ball category, which normally is a good omen for a team. Back to Abrams in the middle, Springer couldn't pick it up cleanly. And here comes Schwester and Hopkins. They've got numbers. Four on two. Doniger. And just shoots it wide. Boy, was that an opportunity. Syracuse having some problems out of the substitution box. When Abrams took that ball up the field offensively, and X! They didn't rotate down and fill those defensive slots, so they only had two remaining defensemen. Green. Hogan, Fratarola, up top. Back left! Get up, left! Denahan draws two players, wheels to the right-handed shot, and goes wide. Denahan loves those severe angle shots. We talked to Rob Mulligan about that. The goalie for Syracuse, well aware that Denahan will fire with very little angle. Denahan really working uh, more on the left-hander side today than you normally see him. Maybe a little mix-up because, or a change-up to try to work off of the left-handed goalie that he's facing. You want to go? Hopkins again with possession. Minute and a half, third quarter, two-goal lead for Syracuse. First semifinal action of the day. Denahan far side. And close, and a finishing shot by Fratarola. Beautiful stick work, four five passes, and they finish on the crease. 11 to 10, tic-tac-toe for Hopkins. It starts with Hogan, goes behind, Denahan, Doniger, and then back inside. Watch the defense right here. On the far side, they've got one, two, three against three Hopkins Blue Jays. And if you roll this forward, you can see as they go behind the cage here, this leaves this man open for a second. The slide right there is a little slow, and he gets the quick stick off, and they score. Great passing inside. Fratarola converts from Doniger. Goal number 10 for Hopkins. They've had a lot of minutes, a lot of minutes on the offensive end. Syracuse should feel lucky that they are only 10 goals on that uh, scoreboard for Hopkins. Again, the face-off control by Searcy and company. They bring it back into the defensive zone to get possession. And they'll look to get a final shot here in the third quarter. Donald! Field appears to be holding up pretty well with the consistent rain falling here at College Park. Tyone, good matchup. Jukes inside on Don Scott, the young freshman. They ought to exploit that, you would think. Young freshman, short stick, Don Scott, and he was playing on Tyone. Doesn't mind doing it. Hoffman loses his footing, gets wrapped in the head, just a brush. And here comes Hopkins, Testa, following it up beautifully. 
They're off and running as Hopkins brings it down. You are the young speedster. And that's the kid we just talked about. A lot of guts for Don Scott. He gives it up and gets the ball back to Syracuse with 30 seconds on the clock. Not a smart shot at all. They'll get it back as Mulligan just throws it out of bounds. Desco shaking his head. I can guarantee you John Halls is shaking his head. We've traded goals in this third quarter. Each team going back and forth and back and forth. This is a tactic, though. I mean, a simple tactic. So you can look at Halls. You want the last shot. Everybody at home knows that. And these teams are just so eager to push the tempo. They've lost a couple opportunities. Now the Blue Jays. Trying to get past, and they do easily get it up. Dan Stessel losing his footing. They look to the crease. Scott's still out there. The young freshman, the young speed midfield, the second unit. Time winding down. Denahan gets it just sucked down by Glass on the defense. They just absorbed that shot. It didn't even get anywhere near Mulligan. So we will start the fourth quarter with the same one goal advantage for Syracuse as they had coming into the second half. We'll be back to College Park with the exciting conclusion of this first semifinal. Fourth quarter coming up. Back at College Park, the NCAA Lacrosse Championships semifinal action. Our first game of the day. It's raining steadily here, but these teams are not letting up on the offensive flow. The crowd's here and excited for fourth quarter action. Searcy and Whedon in place for the faceoff to decide who advances to the championship. Score by quarters, win. Really not much of a difference right there. These two teams combined for nine goals in the first quarter. Again, picked up by Bassett on the faceoff. The vacuum cleaner, time and time again, tried to find Abrams, and Abrams fell down. Conditions, again, continue to get a little sloppier as the rain comes down. Wheat picks it off. Looks to Brasco. No, he'll fire it, and right to the stick of Mulligan. Both teams trying to push the tempo. This will be a shot in close and wide to the right. Neither team wanting to pull back as Siglia comes down and gets a shot that could have decided the game. Ryan Powell, nobody on him, comes and wraps it around the defensive test of good stop by Carcantero. When you take poor shots against Syracuse and their goalie makes saves, you're going to pay on the offensive end because they counterattack so well, they get up the field. Stepped out of bounds is the call. We'll go back to Hopkins. You know John Halls will want to slow things down. This out of bounds on the sideline gives him a chance to put that first midfielder with A.J. Hogan. John Desco saying, hey, he wasn't even on the line. Halls liking the fact that now his players are in position. The chaos has stopped. He wants to settle this thing down and get a good shot. Syracuse with that one goal lead that they got really in the first quarter. They've played evenly since then. Here goes Hopkins really pushing it up with Dave Raboano. White! Doniger. Syracuse again uh, now playing, forced to play more defense because of Hopkins control. Shaverly gets up top to Hogan. Hogan comes to the right hand shot off the pipe. That one beat Mulligan, but now the iron. That one pegged Mulligan in the ankle, and you can see he's limping. He never picked that up out of the stick of A.J. Hogan. Ryan Powell gets it in front and just goes to the side and misses it. Carcaterra dives to get it, but it'll go to Syracuse. Mulligan took this off the ankle, and you can see he is limping. That hit him in the left foot. A.J. Hogan, I spoke of his quick release, and it really right. is quick. He snaps his wrist so fast. Mulligan never really got his stick on that, but he had made the save. He wears the heavy pad on his left leg. It's, a, it's an easy target. It's one that often gets hit. Ryan Powell just bull dodging in and just floats it over the defense, trying to find teammate Burns, giving the ball back to Hawes. Time and time again, Hopkins has a chance to tie this game. Testa and Powell, that's Ryan Powell right there, engaged in a monumental battle. Powell like it, likes to get low. That really works well with Testa, because Testa's not the tallest defender. He's about 5'9". You can see the way Powell loves to feed the backside. He overthrew his target on that last possession. Tim Muir, the young freshman with great speed, got a starting spot or a spot on the second midfield. The last game of the regular season. Connor Denahan. Sinclair. 
Parking defense on him. Watson, go, go, go! Hopkins continues to push in. Don Scott gets the ball behind Scott. Again, a freshman with no fear. Right now, Hopkins has four freshmen on the field. Tim Muir and Don Scott and the attack of Doniger and Benson. You're good. You're good. Glatz, get up. Dunahan with Glatz playing defense. Tries to get it across the field. Floats up. Will stay in bounds and just does. The kid steps out of bounds. Don Scott did a great job. But Manhasset is where he played in uh, five foot seven. He's playing a tough game today. Dances the sideline, gives it back to Syracuse. Tell you, A.J. Hogan has had a terrific game for Hopkins. But if you're Syracuse, you got to love the job that you're doing on Bob Benz, the priest attackman for Hopkins. Came into this game with 28 goals on the season. And he has not scored a goal yet. So they're doing a terrific job inside, guarding the big, tall left-hander. Tyone takes it from Glatzel. Floats into the offensive zone, touches inside the dotted line to make sure that they have fulfilled the requirements of clearing. Got 10 seconds to get it into that box. Kaufman. Take away the right, Timmy, you're going. Now Coyote getting a little bit of room. They're setting something up for him. Here comes the slide. He's got to move the ball, can't find any help. Finally dishes down. Banks over to Powell, big fake, and he buries it. Penalty on the play, they'll give him the goal. Finally, Ryan Powell had some time and room to do his dip and dunk fake, and he gets goal number 12. Huge goal for Syracuse. It's all about the ball movement. Watch the ISO of Powell. He'll be on the back side, and when the defense overcommits to the near side, he's left alone. Fake, 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 dip and dunk. The push call right there will probably be waved off. That was tactical, the way he did that. Just in the right position, got the ball, and when nobody slid early, he had the position in front. Look at the numbers for this tremendous offensive threat. That's the all-time Syracuse career points. Ryan Powell, 281. He's about to pass Tim O'Hara. You can see his brother, Casey, up top with 287 career points. Two-goal lead now. 11 and a half left. Plenty of time for Hopkins as Whedon gets an important possession. They've got room in front. One pass, and Mulligan reads it, anticipates the low pass. He can't control. Ball loose. Crease violation, no goal. A push or a crease violation. One or the other will be called. Push, a they get it back to Hopkins. Push. But that, that was chaotic. It started with a nice save by oh, yeah. Mulligan. The way he matches up, watch the save right here. Dan Denahan will drop his stick. A cardinal sin for a shooter. Mulligan snuffs that out. He was all over that shot, playing his angle so well. Hard to believe he lost it. He had it in his stick and somehow lost it to the right of the goal. Hopkins get another shot at it. Hogan starts behind with Abrams on him. This is another tremendous matchup of a great defender He's going. against Best a first-team All-America. Help him, too. Help him, too. We got to help. Get on, go. Okay, that's your right. shoots it wide. You heard Mulligan calling the slide. You got to go. You got to go. Sends him out. Beautiful job of being the quarterback of the defensive end. Got him, Black. Good boy. Get up right. Go, go, go. Mulligan's out of the goal, can't get possession, finally, in the stick of Abrams. Tries to float it upfield, and he gets it into the stick of Johns Hopkins. A little bit of desperation on the clears by Syracuse, and they've given it back to Hopkins twice. You can't keep doing that without paying for it eventually. Abrams made a sensational play on the grounder, and then the 10-second clock, I think, ticking in his head. So he just decided to chuck it. Didn't throw it far enough. Sigler playing defense on A.J. Hogan, who gets goal number five. That'll count back to a one-goal game. A.J. Hogan, five of the 11 Hopkins goals. This is why we featured him in our Open. At the most talented player on this Hopkins squad. He's done it so many ways. Watch the defense by Siglia, trying to wrap him and hold him. Hogan, another fadeaway jump shot. This time he shoots high. Look at the reaction on the sideline. John Hall is fired up. Watch this goal, though. We saw him do this earlier. And he shot the ball low. This time, he shoots it high. A.J. Hogan, five goals today. They changed the face-off. They took Searcy out for this face-off. 
for Syracuse uh, with the dominance they've had going Tim Burns in the faceoff circle. Interesting call there. Ryan Powell. A lot of pressure on Powell getting four players on him, but he tried to go through all of them. Mulligan up to health. Lobs it to Abrams. Good hustle by Powell to get possession. Faceoffs 18 go, go. of 26 go, go. for Syracuse. Go. Burns. Look at Hopkins applying pressure and getting the ball back. Great checks to get the ball back to their offensive end. Brasco with a little bit of room. Benson to his left. Or two of the goalies up his right. And look at Mulligan again, wasting no time, starting the transition for Syracuse. Neither goalie wants to spend time holding the ball. And again, not, enough, not a smart shot by Hopkins. John Brasco trying to score in transition on a 15-yard bounce shot against the goalie the caliber of Rob Mulligan. It's just not going to go. And Syracuse again gives the ball back to Hopkins. It was two and six, two out of six for their extra man plays, but they can't continue. They are really putting some pressure on themselves, Quinn, by giving the ball back to Hopkins, sometimes with sloppy mistakes. This time, the water helps the ball go off of the stick of Madeline. Out of bounds, goes back to Syracuse, and it'll be Liam Banks bringing it in. Nothing's gone, e gone easy for either of these teams today. The conditions leading to a lot of mistakes, the emotion leading to a lot of mistakes. It has made for a fun and enjoyable game to watch, but certainly not a picture-perfect game. Absolutely. It's uh, a little bit chaotic at times, and John Halls and Hopkins, who would like to have a little more control, has handled that beautifully. Teams at even strength right now as Liam Banks gets Nadalin in his face to inbound this ball. Pushes it into Coyone. Coyone now with a little bit of room. Schwester, the short stick defender on him. Coyone trying to get some speed built up. He is tough to stop once he gets that head of steam. Back right. Springer to Banks, and they work it all the way around with Powell on the crease, locked up with Testa playing defense. Kaufman, who's had some looks and hasn't pulled the trigger, works on the far side. DJ DeConza working on him. Kaufman finally off to Springer. Loves. Banks again just distributes it back out front. D'Arcangelo. Back to Coyone, who tries to force it to Powell. Double team on him. Little chance of him getting that shot off with all the attention the Hopkins was giving him. Patience, one goal lead, eight minutes to go in this contest. The winner faces the winner of Princeton, Virginia in the Monday championship game. That'll be on ESPN. 10.55 starts. Here. Get out, DJ. Okay, low, far side. Coffin's got some room. Looking around to make sure nobody's going to double on him. DeConza, both players slip it. Far side, this is room for Springer. Lock slows and a great save by Cacatera. Liam Banks squirt through two defenders. Treble, Springer can't get it in the net. Good double team by a hustling Johns Hopkins defense. And here they come to their offensive end. What a flurry for Syracuse. Constant pressure. Springer with the right-handed oh. shot. Carcaterra made the save, and then Banks squirted into traffic, feeding backside. I'm not sure if the ball missed the goal or if it was another save by Carcaterra. But constant pressure by the Syracuse Orange. Now Hopkins looks to patience and be patient with the ball themselves as they get some substitutions. You've got to rest your defense this game at this stage. John Hall has to be pleased. This game is right here for him to take. Timeout called by the referee. An equipment timeout for Carcaterra, who came over to the midfield line from the goal. Something with his helmet. Yeah, Springer's shot hit him in the, uh, the, the throat protector, the neck protector. And you can see right there Official the officials restrapping his throat protector. Take a look at the next game. This one's exciting, but the next one will be equally tense and great talent to be shown. Princeton takes on Virginia. That's 45 minutes after the end of this game, about 3 o'clock Eastern time, right here on ESPN2. Don't miss the great coverage of ESPN on the semifinal. This is Princeton getting set to go into the locker room. The Tigers, the team of the decade in the 90s, ready to take on the defending champion, Virginia Cavaliers. The equipment timeout gives Hopkins a chance to get A.J. Hogan on the field. Seglia trying to get the check, finally does. Seglia gets around behind him, but the ball's still loose. Mulligan comes out to make the check, but it's Denahan who gets the all-important possession. Get up! Doniger, back to the captain, Denahan. 
They've got the ball on the ground, but Hopkins has done a much better job late in this game of getting it back in their stick. Fraterola, he's had some big goals this year, forcing it a little bit as I see you shake your head. Fraterola trying to run through three defenders. Glatzel on Denahan. Glatzel locking him up. Denahan looking to distribute, forcing the corner. Glatzel hammering him, but the ball's still in his stick. You're not going to be Glatzel power man on man. Shaverly drives to the left side. Mulligan out there trying to get the important possession back. Finally does. Let's see if he looks for the quick outlet. He's got Seguia. John Glatzel and Denahan have really interlocked in a great battle today. Room for Coyote. Split dodge comes in. He's got time, but a great check from behind by Shaverly. A little bit of a lazy stick, and Shaverly just took it back. And again, Hopkins has time to get a nice, quiet possession and a good shot. They put intense pressure on Syracuse, and you almost feel that it's inevitable they're, gonna, they're going to tie the game. And they will be patient right here as they substitute some fresh legs on the field. Syracuse has been asked to play an awful lot of defense here in the fourth quarter. Good one, Jay! I was saying, though, the glatzel Denahan matchup, Glatzel is so tough to beat man-on-man, -man, rarely gets beat to the goal. Hopkins now looking for a high percentage shot, swishing down with a bounce shot, beautiful job, and a goal by Timmy Muir, the freshman, the biggest goal of his career. The speed that Halls liked as they put the young kids into that second midfield was evident there. It's the biggest goal of his career because it's the first goal of his career. Timmy Muir comes into this game having played in every game this year, zero goals and two assists, and here he is, fresh off the bench, with a nice bounce shot on the run. Reaction on the Hopkins bench. They know how crucial it is for some of their younger players to score, and emotionally, that's gotta be a big lift as they tie it at, at 12. That ball was right in front of Mulligan. Didn't get the body on it, which cost him as it bounced over his shoulder. Cersei back out there with Weed. It's a war of face-offs that could mean the championship opportunity. Winner here goes to take the winner of Princeton, Virginia. And five minutes left to decide. All tied at 12. Cersei thought he had it. He didn't, and here comes Whedon. He'll take his chances now to calm things down as Hopkins now has a chance to go ahead with a goal here. Cersei and company, they've dominated today, but that was a crucial face-off at 12-12. Whedon somehow squirted out of the struggle with the ball. A.J. Hogan looking to shoot, goes high and wide. That's all right. That one either hits the corner or it's backed up beautifully by Doniger. A possession kind of shot. Again, pressure on Mulligan, who picks up and immediately outlets. Pressure. Bassett coming up hard. Trying to outrun. Springer down low. Far side. And Liam Banks gets stuffed by Carcaterra. The save of the day by Brian Carcaterra. Carcaterra dove across the cage. We're going to have a delayed call against Syracuse. That was an unbelievable save as he dove across the goal. The fans loving it. Carcaterra. You play your whole career for that one moment. Carcaterra loves the crowd, loves the moment. And he did. All-out effort, the biggest save of his brilliant career. Watch the fast break. Bassett to Springer to Powell across the cage. Look at Carcaterra. He just sells out, dives across the cage, and gets a stick on that. Foul against Syracuse. So Hopkins now with the extra man. And working up top, Hogan wanted to get the shot off in a little bit too quickly. Two out of seven are the numbers for the extra man for Hopkins. This will give them the lead if they can get it by Mulligan. Connor Denahan off to Doniger, back to Dan Denahan, the captain of this offense. Very controlled, no rush here, but three and a half minutes left to go in the game. One time for a shot. Good stick check. Puts the ball back as teams are at even strength. The all-important possession. It'll be a push call probably on Syracuse. Oh, they're going to put him in the box. I didn't see it on the struggle. Rabuano, Denahan, Abrams, and Stesson. 
where we're all really on the ground battling for the ball. It's some kind of call on the near side. Well, Avendroff gets called for a slash. That's the way I read it. Hey, Syracuse's defense, though, after giving up two extra man goals to Hopkins, they have been outstanding in the second half. Right now, Hopkins, two for eight on the extra man. At one time in this game, I think they were two for three or even two for four. So they found the answer. If you're Hopkins, I think you got to change the formula. It's clearly gone stale. Their extra man offense is not even generating any shots right now. Change your format, get a little movement, things may open up. Let's see if they come with that kind of effect. One more chance. They certainly have had the extra man minutes. They've had so many more chances with the extra player than Syracuse has. Syracuse's extra man defense so quick. Seglia up top, and Marshall Abrams inside gets a stick on any pass that comes through the middle. Trying to get the lead with only three minutes to go. Crucial extra man play as Hogan takes it with Kelly in front of him. St. George plays defense on that side. Young kids everywhere for Hopkins. Donald Scott down low, number six. Two freshmen down low. Don Scott for the left hand. Oh, no, I'm sorry, this is Rob Oano. Rob Oano's down the left hand. Good save by Mulligan. That was right in the corner. An outside shot. It was well placed. Give Robbie Mulligan big time credit. Staying with that. Getting his stick on the ball. And look at this clear as Connor Denahan tries to get it back. Kelly almost falling down twice, crawling across midfield. Ryan Powell trying to take it in his own hands. Out front to Springer. Springer loads, and he's got goal 13, but there's a flag on the play. That'll give them a one-goal lead. Extra man on one end of the field. Somehow, Syracuse defense stands tall, and Ryan Powell feeds Springer to beat Parker Terra for one of the few times this half. Springer's third goal of the game. I was watching Coach Desco on the far side. He was looking to call timeout, but saw that Powell had gained an advantage and gives Springer a lot of credit for putting that ball on the goal. Powell to Springer, his third of the game, 13 to 12, Syracuse with 2.23 to go. Very tempting as a coach there when you got possession to call the timeout, but give Desco a lot of credit. He let his players play. He realized that Powell had gained the inside advantage. They love to get inside doing the clears. Mulligan just came up, went all the way out of the goal and talked to each individual player on this faceoff. That in their face, pumped them up and said, this is it. Game's on the line. Let's get the possession. They've done such a great job in the faceoff circle. Whedon, number three for Hopkins, has faced Searcy, number 46 all day. So look, John Desco, call out, make sure he has the right players on there. Syracuse will be down for five seconds. That was a short-handed short goal. goal. That was a yeah, short-handed short goal. Unbelievable shifting of events here. It was still extra man for Hopkins. It's going to be a timeout. Syracuse prior to the faceoff. So that short-handed goal could prove to be the difference in this game. Mulligan making the great save on the outside shot, getting the outlet, triggering the Syracuse transition game. And then Coach Desco didn't call the timeout, and they capitalized. A one-goal lead for Syracuse. Two minutes left to decide who goes to the championship in lacrosse. change the world by changing the lives of the students they teach. Since 1990, State Farm has presented the Good Neighbor Award to over 100 of the nation's most innovative teachers. Teachers like Mrs. Maureen Spate, here with just a few of the students she's inspired over the years. State Farm would like to thank teachers everywhere. So dramatic, the last two minutes, and Syracuse doing the impossible, scoring shorthanded. Let's take a look at the series history, Quint, of these two great legendary uh, teams. Hopkins leads the all-time series, but Syracuse has won three out of the last four, all by one goal, and that's the margin today. Look at the championship battles these two teams staged in the 80s. Syracuse has won four of the seven 
tournament meetings, and this certainly living up to the billing. Syracuse Hopkins, always an intense rival. Hopkins has to get the ball, and Whedon comes up with a big faceoff. Siglia, who has been dominant today, Whedon comes up with the biggest faceoff of the day. They had to have possession, and they get it. Ball down on the carpet. Everybody's sliding as Dan Denahan comes right back up with it. Hopkins roller pushing the tempo. And look at Syracuse just wrapping him up. There's a flag down at the midfield. Seglia with a muscle cramp in his right leg. He is on the, on the turf as well. Slash call against Syracuse. Again, they'll be in the box. Watch the hit. You can see Fraterola pushing the tempo. Didn't get the shot off. And Seglia goes down with a leg cramp. He's still on the floor. Seglia is taking a look at his left calf, I believe. These teams should now be even strength because, remember, Syracuse had the man advantage there, so it should be nine on nine, which would result in basically a five on five uh, half-court situation. Two minutes to go. If Syracuse does get the ball, remember, they've got to keep it in their offensive box, but Hopkins now set for their, for a set play here as they trail by one goal. Don't forget, We've got the bookend of this great matchup. Princeton takes on defending champion Virginia 45 minutes after this game, about 3 o'clock Eastern time, right here on ESPN2. ESPN's coverage, exclusive coverage of NCAA championship lacrosse. Don't miss it. Pause with yet another chance to tie this game up. For 37 seconds, these two teams will be at even strength. And then Hopkins will have a man advantage because of that Syracuse foul. So if you're Hopkins here, you're going to be patient probably for 37. Watch the replay. Bassett to Springer to Powell. And then Carcaterra made the save. This was with the score at 12-12. Then Hopkins got the extra man and give Mulligan some credit. And they come right back down the field. Ryan Powell, they're short-handed. They're looking to call timeout. They don't. They get the ball to Springer. He moves towards the middle of the field, and he sticks it. His third goal of the game on an assist from Ryan Powell. Powell's got three goals and two assists unofficially. Tremendous day for a guy who really has been shut off most of the day. You don't feel like he has dominated or controlled much, but look at the numbers. He's right there scoring important goals. He scored the first two goals of the game to get him going and showing that he is the leader still on the offensive end for Syracuse. Powell, take a look at the Syracuse numbers. Six NCAA championships, 18 straight semifinals, 10 championship games. Getting back to Powell, though, scored the first two goals of the game, kind of set the tempo. And then with the score 10 to 9 in favor of Syracuse, he has assisted on two of the last three goals and scored the other one. So he's been involved in the last three goals, proving, as we've said about him, that he's such a money player. He's a real clutch player who plays his best when the money is on the line. He's got himself locked into a dogfight now with his brother Casey Powell to see who will be the all-time career point leader for Syracuse. Hopkins now, we talked about it'll be a five-on-five situation down here. I don't know if Syracuse uh, wants to be as aggressive. We'll see what they do. Fratarola did a nice job of pushing the tempo last time. Here he is trying to get a slide out of Syracuse. Dan Denahan off to the wing. They've got about 30 seconds to work off. Connor Denahan from Fraterola to his right. Fraterola sets a pick. A.J. Hogan will be coming out of the penalty box shortly. A.J. Hogan on the move getting the ball is a dangerous sight to a defense. Here he comes. They'll get it right back. A.J. Hogan now takes the ball right there. They have a man advantage. Fitting way to end this quarter because they've been a man advantage for so long. It's been so much pressure on the defense of Syracuse and Mulligan in particular. Denahan, big shot, Mulligan just gets the block in the midsection, they've got possession. Syracuse with the ball, looking for help, lofting it up to nobody in particular, and the possession still up for grabs. Kaufman picks it up, there's a swim move of Nebraska, timeout called by Desco, under a minute, Syracuse with a one goal lead and the ball. Mulligan made the save he had to make, on the far side against Doniger, you can hear the ball hit it off his chest protector. Watch the crucial extra man play. They get the ball far side. Denahan kicks it to Doniger, the quick release. But Mulligan there with the body. Beautiful save, and then they call timeout once they get the ball over the midfield line. 54 seconds to go. Syracuse 
They just want to run the clock out. Hopkins will be forced to double team. Carcaterra will come flying out of the goal to try to make a play. The timeout gives you a chance to put the ball in the stick of Ryan Powell. The heroes of this game for Syracuse. The faceoffs early on. That's paid dividends. But the man down unit in the second half. Unbelievable pressure they've been. They have been faced time and time again. Five or six fouls. But they have thwarted every Hopkins extra man attempt in the second half. That's where Hopkins will look if they do come out of this on the short end. They'll look back at those extra man opportunities and said, we had our chances. A lot of time left, though, folks. This is not over. 13 to 12, ironically, that was the same score when these two teams met earlier this year. Regular season matchup in the Dome. It ended 13 to 12. Controversial shot to end the game after the clock had expired. Now they need 54 second possession and Syracuse would advance. Hopkins will put intense pressure on the ball. They're going to be to Kione up near midfield. Kione's the fastest, perhaps the fastest player on the Syracuse roster. Brasco laying the wood on him. Kione looking for help. Finds it with Ryan Powell. Ryan Powell in no hurry now to give it up. He's got the bulk, he's got the power and the move to keep a possession. Double team, looking for help again. Ryan Powell almost tripped. He's got to stay in the box. Lifts it over the defense and that'll buy him some time. Clock winding down, but still time for Hopkins to get it. Nobody in the goal as they pull the goalie and are double teaming. Nobody in the net, it's wide open and there's the goal to Eisen. Burns comes over, Hopkins gambled, pulled the goalie and that whole series where they tried to get the ball on a double team and patience showed up for Syracuse. Amazing control by Ryan Powell, Timmy Burns, Matt Coyone. They get into their stall offense. They were pressured, but they never got flustered. They made a couple passes. I was surprised to see Burns go to the goal, but he scored on the empty net, and that's all that counts. And Syracuse off the timeout. They kill the clock and get the goal. Watch the replay. Parcaterra out of the net in a double team posture, and Burns just dives and makes it count. The game winner was Springer from Powell, and that was icing on the cake. This game is at all the drama of a championship. It's a semifinal. The winner will face the winner of Princeton, Virginia. Closing moments. A.J. Hogan tripped at the last moment with nine seconds left. They'll have a chance to get a shot off. If you're Hopkins here, I think you've got to screen the goal. You take a shot immediately. Remember, earlier on in this game, we had two goals that were scored of face-offs, one in seven seconds. That goal scored by Burns is huge right now. It gives him a two-goal cushion. And as you mentioned, they won't waste time getting a shot off to see what's left in this game. They should shoot it immediately. There's no way that they can score they need a and then win a better, face off. A little bit better position. Hogan will get it out front, just cranks it off the pipe. It was a great shot by Hogan, who has five goals. The All-American from Hopkins tried to strap the team on his back one last time. Just came off the iron, and Halls knows that's the last chance they'll have to catch Syracuse today. What a great game. Hopkins taking Syracuse to the last two minutes of this ball game. The number one ranked Syracuse Orange, they only tripped once this year against Cornell. Otherwise, they've gone unbeaten. The clock winds down, Syracuse runs on the field, and they will advance to the championship this Monday. We'll have that coverage on ESPN at 10.55. They will play the winner of Princeton, Virginia, but right now they are just celebrating the moment. Hopkins took them to the limit and had plenty of chances to go ahead. But the defense of Syracuse, ironically a team known for its offense, has big time defense.